the last episode of Practical Fitness, we discussed the importance of regular physical activity for promoting physical and mental well-being. I introduced the three major components of a workout, should you try to perform each safely and effectively, and even left you with some tips to keep you efficient and motivated. Today, I'm going to expand on the basic paradigm I established in the last episode by giving you some new stuff to add to the warm-up, conditioning, and cool-down phases of the workout. The name of the game is cardio. I'll give you some tips when designing your own routine, like how to intermix cardio and strength training. We'll talk about eating for fitness, and also give you some cool tips how to stay motivated. My sensei always told me that those who are truly passionate about fitness, exercise, not to look good, but to feel good. Intrinsically motivated goals, that are goals that you do just for the sake of doing them, such as these, are actually shown to be associated with consistency and improved mental well-being. In addition to its effects on cognitive function, exercise appears to help with the treatment of chronic and acute depression and anxiety. Research has actually shown that physical activity consistent with the American College of Sports Medicine's recommended weekly dose has comparable results for treating depression as many common and effective techniques, such as medication and cognitive behavioral therapy. Remember from last time that a typical warm-up is the 5 to 10 minutes of light to moderate intensity aerobic activity followed by a dynamic stretch routine. In the last episode, I gave you several dynamic stretches to incorporate into your routine. Now here are a few more. Hold on to a sturdy object if you need support. Now, swing one leg laterally so that it passes in front of the other leg and then off to the side. Stand up straight. Jog forward, bringing your knees up and driving your heels back with each step forward. Assume a pike position with hips in the air. Keeping your legs straight, place your right foot over your left foot and press the ankle down. Then release. Perform about 10 repetitions each side. Now that we are thoroughly warmed up, I have four new workouts to give you. While well, my last episode I presented mainly strength training routines, these next few intermix cardio and strength training for an improved workout. Start with your feet together and your hands at your sides. Jump up, spreading your feet apart while lifting your arms above your head. You should land with your toes pointed forward and your fingertips touching. Start with slow, controlled movements. Then, gradually increase the tempo without sacrificing form. This is a great aerobic exercise and really helps improve endurance. If you are new to jumping rope, performing this workout can be quite frustrating. Here are some tips to get you started. Keep your body relaxed and start slow. Try to land softly. Avoid really smacking the ground with the jump rope. Practice adjusting your tempo, going from slow to fast and back to slow until you get that coordination down. Work on performing small circles with the wrists and shoulder. Now that we got the form down, let's start assembling sets and repetitions. Workout one. Start with 50 repetitions of each, then cut it down to 40, then 30, 20 and finally 10 repetitions for time. Workout 2. Perform all the following for time. Run 1 mile. 100 push-ups. 200 squats. Finally run 1 final mile. Workout 3. Run 400 meters. 50 squats. Run 400 meters. 50 push-ups, run 400 meters, 50 sit-ups, run a final 400 meters. A typical cool-down should involve 5 to 10 minutes of tapered moderate intensity activity. After the cool-down, incorporate some of the static stretching I demonstrated last time. Now, depending on the range of motion you're trying to increase, you might even try some of these new techniques. Try to minimize the amount of rest time in these workouts. In order to reap the benefits of cardiovascular workouts such as these, you should strive for 15 minutes of continuous activity. If you're looking to increase your athletic performance, decreasing the amount of rest time between sets will increase stamina and endurance. Because these workouts alternate muscle groups, you should be able to complete most of them in about 30 minutes.
If you are unaccustomed to running, it is imperative that you begin by walking and gradually adding short bouts of running to your walking routine. You might start off with a 20 minute cardiovascular workout with a run rock ratio of one to four, then gradually work your way to a 60 minute cardiovascular workout with a run rock ratio of two to one. Starting off with long continuous runs will likely lead to premature fatigue and injury and also stem improvement. Now the workouts I've provided here are a great starting point, but don't hesitate to branch out. If you stick to the same basic workout for a long period of time, your body becomes used to it and your further improvement will be minimal. There are plenty of interesting workouts available online for all fitness levels. Reebok CrossFit Run, Runner's World, and Men's Health are all great online sources for diverse, convenient workouts. Choose compound exercises over isolated exercises. All the workouts I've shown you so far have been compound exercises. Compound exercises mobilize more than one joint. The more joints you mobilize, the greater your heart works and the more calories you burn. Incorporate some explosive workouts into your routine. Examples include clapping push-ups, burpees, tucks, jumps, and box jumps. These really push your body and are a great way to train strength, endurance, and stamina. Build support structures for yourself. Going to work out with friends provides emotional support and a little stress relieving social interaction. If your friends aren't too inclined, you can always join a fitness class and make new ones. Also, consider tracking your progress or periodically testing yourself with the various fitness tests available online. Watching your improvement will certainly motivate you to continue. You also consider posting your progress online on Facebook or Daily Mile. In the age of electronic communication, having your online contacts monitor your performance and hold you accountable to your goals is a great way to keep you motivated. And remember to always have fun. For me, 45 minutes in front of a heavy bag feels like 10 minutes, mainly because I love kickboxing so much. Choosing activities that you enjoy will increase your motivation dramatically. Iowa's athletic department has done a wonderful job of providing a variety of fitness classes to suit everyone's interests. You may have heard something about supplementing your workouts with protein either during or after for improved benefit. Well, the research on this protein carb supplementation is actually mixed. One thing that is certain, however, is that carb consumption about 30 minutes after your exercise does promote recovery by replenishing glycogen stores. You want to shoot for between 0.8 and 1 gram of carbs per kilogram of body weight. This supplement can double as an incentive, so choose something tasty like juice, a sports drink, or an energy bar. The boost in digestion we experience post-exercise means that you can enjoy these treats without worrying about them adding to your waistline. Although fitness books and popular magazines have helped promote the idea that fasting before exercise burns fat, Recent research on something known as excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, or EPOC, suggests that eating a hearty breakfast before low to moderate intensity training results in increased markers of lipid oxidation several hours after training. Simply put, eating a well-balanced meal before going to exercise will lead to greater weight loss than going in on an empty stomach. 